Ancient Greece was a state which left an enormous mark on history. Among the Greeks were many talented writers, architects, artists, mighty warriors, athletes, great thinkers, and philosophers. Today, when we read ancient Greek myths, we imagine what the heroes looked like based on the sources of those times. The Greek people called themselves Hellenes, later, the Romans called them Greeks. The ancient Greeks left behind a huge number of sculptures and images. By studying them, we can imagine what their contemporaries, such as Aristotle or Alexander the Great, looked like. In fact, this is not true. Sculptors and artists of that time were very fond of embellishing the faces and figures of ancient Hellenes. For example, to depict perfect figures and faces in such characters as gods and heroes. After all, it was a matter of memory for many centuries, so artists wanted descendants to represent the Greeks as ideal in every way. Negative characters, such as scoundrels or commoners, were depicted with prominent eyebrows and animal noses, either flattened, like those of monkeys or hooked, like those of birds of prey. Take, for example, such a notion as the Greek profile. The distinguishing feature of this profile is a low forehead, showing mental activity, smoothly passing into the back of the nose. The bridge of the nose is almost invisible, a short, thin, straight nose without a crook, not too wide nostrils. A smooth, rounded, relatively heavy chin without a dimple, deeply set eyes. The Greek profile lacks chewing muscles and cheekbones. In modern Greeks, not to mention other peoples, such a profile is rare. Along with the Greek nose, ancient artists began to embellish the musculature and hair of their creations. The bodies of ancient models were not so perfect and physically developed. The statues show us the ideal person, but in life it was quite different. Of course, sometimes you could meet a man with the athletic forms of Apollo or a beautiful woman with the body of Aphrodite, but still not often. There were a lot of drunken old women and old fishermen, especially in the poor quarters of the cities of ancient Greece. There are quite a few nudes among the Greek statues, but that does not mean that the Greeks were not ashamed to walk naked. In ancient times, in the 8th century BC, men worked in the fields naked. Soon, in the same century, first runners and then other athletes began to perform naked. It was believed that only in certain circumstances and only in their circle could men walk naked, during certain religious ceremonies or sports. It was assumed that Greeks, who were equal among themselves, could not hide anything from each other, including their intimate body parts. Statues began to emphasize the social role of the citizen, so they began to be depicted as naked. It was forbidden to depict worthy women including goddesses, naked, as it was considered degrading to their dignity. The exceptions to this rule were the statues of Aphrodite by Praxiteles and Aphrodite of Milos. To avoid public censure, sculptors depicted women in preparation for bathing. By studying the skeletons in ancient Greek tombs, scientists can say that the Greeks were indeed relatively tall. Adult men were 1.67 to 1.82 meters tall and women were 1.50 to 1.57 meters tall. If we believe the myths, the ancient Greeks were blue-eyed blondes. But today it is proven that some languages did not have the right words to describe the colors we know, so they chose the closest in meaning. So, the Greeks called blondes, dark-haired or with brown hair, and their eyes were gray and green. Modern anthropologists believe that the ancient Hellenes looked different. For example, the Spartans and Thebans were tall, broad-faced, with fair skin and hair. The Hellenes, on the other hand, were shorter and darker. The possibility of seeing the real faces of the ancient Hellenes appears in the study of the Phaeum portraits painted from the 1st to the 4th century AD, funerary images of the Greeks who lived in ancient times in the Egyptian oasis of Phaeum. The Greeks settled there after the conquests of Alexander the Great. Relatives of the dead commissioned the most accurate portraits, as they wanted to remember their loved ones as they were. We can see from these portraits that the ancient Hellenes did not differ much from the modern Greeks. Most of them were dark-eyed and dark-haired, with only occasional light-eyed and fair-haired tribesmen. 
The ancient Greeks sewed clothes from rectangular wool or linen fabrics and wore light clothing because it was hot most of the year. Greek clothing usually consisted of a tunic, chitin or peplos, and a cloak. It was fastened at the shoulders and waist with pins or decorative clasps, and the waist was tied with a belt. Women's clothes were ankle-length and men's clothes were knee-length. The inner tunic of Greek women, made of wool, was called peplos, and had clasps on the shoulders. The chitin was a lighter linen tunic, often pleated, worn by both men and women of all ages. The hot Mediterranean climate of ancient Greece did not allow clothes to cover the whole body, so they came up with the idea of exposing one shoulder. It was first in Crete, then in the islands, and in mainland Greece to walk with the bare shoulder. Ancient Greek women wore a shawl or loose veil over their tunics, loved gold and silver necklaces, and often adorned themselves with earrings and bracelets. Men usually wore chlamydis, woolen robes about the size of a rectangle. Such clothing was considered by the Greeks to be typical military attire. And in cases where the cluda was not worn as a robe, it was wrapped around the arm so that it could serve as a light shield in battle. Working men usually wore a loincloth. The ancient Greeks walked mostly barefoot, especially in the house. However, they wore leather boots or leather sandals when necessary. In summer, to protect themselves from the heat, men wore a wide-brimmed hat called a pedizos. It was worn mostly for travel. Greek women wore hats with crowns with high peaks. Most women had a narrow waist, graceful build, short stature, black eyes, and hair. Faces were hidden in shadows, so the skin was pale. Women wore either tresses framing the neck or curls gathered on the forehead or braids into which they wove ribbons. According to numerous studies, even young girls were quite severe and looked militant and masculine. For a long time about the differences in the appearance of the ancient and modern Greeks, there was a popular stereotype that the Greeks used to be all fair-skinned, with regular facial features. After all, this is what all the ancient Greek poems claim. And in the fact that they have changed now, the effects of the Turkish conquest played a role. Since then, numerous genetic studies have been conducted examining the remains left by the ancient Greek conquests. Modern evidence claims that the Greek people arose from a mixture of many ethnic groups, the Ionians, the Aeolians, the inhabitants of Crete, the Dorians, Spartans and Macedonians, and the Achaeans.